In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. First of all, why, why is this a useful thing to know? Well, working with energy or potential and kinetic energy is often a very easy way to solve problems. So, you know, I don't need to know the details about how a ball falls from one place to another place. If I know its initial height, I can calculate its potential energy, and I can figure out how fast it's moving when it hits the ground. And we'll see very similar things in the context of capacitors. Energy stored in capacitors can also be used to do work. So it can be used to do something useful at a later time if you store a certain amount of charge on it. So how do we figure out what the energy stored on a capacitor is? Well, sort of intuitively what's going on is, let's say we have a certain amount of charge plus Q up here and a certain amount of charge minus Q down here. As I add more and more charge, it gets more and more difficult to add even more charge. So once I have a bunch of positive charges here and a bunch of negative charges here, if I try to add another positive charge and another negative charge, that's much harder than if there were no charge on either plate because the positive charge here and the negative charge here want to repel the additional charge. How difficult is it to add a little bit more charge? So let's say dq, so plus dq and minus dq. Well, if we know the voltage across our capacitor, then we know the potential energy or the energy required to add that little bit of charge dq, I'll call that du, is just equal to the electric potential times the amount of charge. And so this V is the voltage from one plate to the other plate. It's the amount, and V times dq is the amount of energy that I need to add a little bit more charge to my capacitor. Now, if I know the capacitance, C, then I can relate the voltage to something a little more useful here, which is the amount of charge. So I know that the charge on a capacitor is equal to the, its capacitance times the voltage, or the voltage is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. And so I can use that to figure out du. It's just Q over C times dQ. And so this says exactly what I was, what we were saying before, that as we add more and more charge Q, it gets harder and harder, the energy cost goes up. So if I add a little bit of dQ when Q is very small, then the energy required is low. But when I add a little bit more charge when the total charge on the capacitor is high, then the energy cost is going to be much higher. And so I could plot the energy cost du versus the amount of charge that's on a given plate, either the positive one or the negative one. And we'd see that it looks something like this. So as our charge gets higher and higher, it takes more and more energy to add a little bit of dQ, a little bit of charge, which we've called dQ. But I'm not interested in this quantity du or the amount that an, a little bit more charge will cost me. I'm interested in the total energy U. But to find that, we can just add up all of the little du's. So at the very beginning, it doesn't take a lot of energy to add a little bit of charge. Then it takes a little more energy, then a little more energy, then a little more energy, then a little more energy. And if we integrate all of these little energy costs, du, then we'll get the total energy cost, the total amount of energy that it takes us to add all of these charges. And so we, we have an expression for du in terms of q, c, and dq. It's just equal to q over c times dq. Now c is a constant. It's the capacitance of the capacitor. In this case, we've, I've shown it as a parallel plate capacitor, but it could be a spherical capacitor. It could be a cylindrical capacitor. It could be anything that we want. But c is a constant. It doesn't change as we add more and more charge. And so we can pull it out front. And so all we need to do is integrate Q times dQ. And if we want this to be the total energy, then we should start from zero charge. So when there's nothing on the capacitor to when there's, uh, let's say, QF, like a, our final amount of charge. So we're integrating from zero to QF. But this is a, a fairly simple integral. So it's just the same as 
the integral of x dx, except I've called the variable q instead of x. And so this is just, so one over c is our constant out front. This is just one half q squared. And then we plug in q is equal to zero and q is equal to our final charge. And we get q final squared over 2c. And so this is the amount of energy that it took us to add a bunch of charge, to add some amount qf of charge to our capacitor plates. This is also the amount of charge that is now stored on the capacitor, which we could release at a later time. And typically you won't see it written with the f, typically you'll just see it written as q, where q is the total amount of charge stored on the capacitor. We can also use our relationship between charge and voltage, so q is equal to c times v, to get a different expression. So if we plug in q, then we get u is equal to 1 half c times v squared. And this is a very common expression because very frequently we know the voltage across a capacitor and we know its capacitance. Very, uh, sometimes we know the charge, sometimes we don't. So this, I would say, is the most common expression that's used for energy on a capacitor. If you wanted to, you could also cancel out the capacitance, and you could find that, so if we only plug in 1q here, we could see that u is equal to v times q over 2. And that's also perfectly valid. Uh, you probably won't see this a whole lot. It, might, it usually won't be useful. This is typically the most useful expression for calculating energy stored on capacitors. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.